Hey, City Church. So glad that we can spend just a couple of minutes together on this New Year's Eve as we look back on a very eventful, very, very eventful 2020. And at the same time, as we look ahead to a brand new year, yeah, that's right, 2021 will be here in just a few minutes. And so I thought it would be special for us, especially in light of COVID, especially in light of the fact that we can't gather publicly, and especially in light of the fact that many of us are by ourselves in our homes. I thought it would be appropriate for us just to spend a couple of moments together. Don't worry, this isn't going to be a long message, but I really felt impressed by God, by the Holy Spirit, that we needed to come together again to look back on a very eventful 2020 and also to anticipate what's coming in 2021. Not to rehearse everything so much, but 2020 has been a year, hasn't it? It's been a year of pressure, a year of fear, a year of frustrations, and a year of loss. It's amazing that uh, we've been in quarantine for 10 months, and it uh, doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon, and yet, the, as they're saying, the, the match is being lit at the end of the tunnel. So in 2021, we can see at the end of the tunnel, there is light, there is hope. And for the follower of Jesus, we know this to be true, that the best days are ahead, regardless of what happens to us, what circumstances or what viruses are active in our world. Because of our faith in Christ, no matter what happens to us on this side of eternity, we have the best news yet, that we have a Savior who's going to return for us. We have the promise that we're going to be renewed in new creation with God forever. And that is our ultimate hope. And so I thought it would be important for us, uh, thinking about this, again, monumental opportunity between one year and another, just hours away from 2021, I thought about some different transitions in the Word of God. And namely, there's two that really came to mind. First is the children of Israel, as they were gathering in the wilderness, about to seize the promised land. It was a monumental transition. It was the people of God coming together to, to hear from their leader, from Moses, and then ultimately from Moses to pass the baton to Joshua. And in that crucial time, God spent a lot of time preparing the Israelites for what was to come. Again, from going from one thing to another or from one reality to a brand new one. And I also thought of another transition in the Word of God. Another group of people thousands of years later, it was the disciples. It was those 12 first apostles, the people that Jesus had tapped on the shoulder, including the, the, the one that the apostles uh, named to replace Judas who had betrayed Jesus. And so with all that newness and all that fear and all of that uncertainty, Jesus gathered those 12 together on a beach and he, he encouraged them. And he basically said this, it's that this is my mission. This is my kingdom. And it's not going to be easy. There will be obstacles. There will be fear. There will be things that will happen to you that you will choose not to happen, just like it was for me. So it reminds them that we're going from one reality to another, that it's not going to be like it was last year. It's not going to be like it was before. It's my mission. It's my kingdom. But here's the great news. No matter what you're going to face, God reminded the Israelites and Jesus reminded his disciples that I will be with you always, even till the very end of the age. And so we don't know what 2020 is going to look like. I would be foolish right now to predict what would happen in 2021 because, quite frankly, none of us could have saw COVID coming, could we? And yet, here's the great news, is that God is calling all of us into this brand new year to renew our faith, renew our commitment to Him, to renew our commitment to one another. The beautiful thing about the local church, and that's why we're connecting online right now in our various homes, in our various apartments, even across different cities, Lately, we've been connecting with people in Vancouver, in Ottawa, all over the island of Montreal, uh, in places in the United States, and even we've had people from Jordan in the Middle East. Some of our citizens right now were on vacation and traveling. We're able to all connect through the miracle of technology together. And it's a reminder that we're not doing things alone. Even though we have to be alone for safety right now and to honor the government's wishes right now and to protect the most vulnerable right now, we're not alone because Jesus is with us. He's sitting right beside us 
And also, as important as that is, it's also important that Jesus has connected us with a family, a group of people who are different than us, and yet, again, pulling in the same direction, on the same mission, knowing that God is going to keep us together. So let me give you three words of encouragement, again, as we look back on 2020 and as we look ahead for the uncertain road of 2021. The first is this, remember your blessings. We talked about this last Sunday and it bears repeating. With so much uncertainty and with so much fear and pressure that all of us are facing, it's so important that we remember our blessings. We're going to give you some time to reflect upon that in just a couple of minutes. So think about your blessings. Get ready for some tangible, specific things. We're going to get an opportunity later on to pause the video on the screen and for you to do some homework, to reflect in a journal, to reflect in a piece of notebook paper, or maybe even to grab your notes app on your phone and just write that down, these three different areas. The first, remember your blessings. Secondly, we saw this last week too, not just remembering our blessings, but also secondly, releasing our burdens, releasing our burdens. None of us are starting 2021 exactly with a, with a blank slate. We're in some ways carrying some of our problems. We're grateful that the, the biggest road, the hardest road of 2020 is behind us. But of course, some of our bills, some of our health situations, some of our relationship strains, some of that uncertainty will carry into 2021. And so in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7, Paul gives us the antidote to worry. He reminds us to release our burdens. Release them. Matthew 7, verses 7 to 11, I want to encourage you to spend some time reflecting upon that today. Jesus compares our Heavenly Father to a great Father who gives good gifts to His children. And Jesus asked this rhetorical question, would a good father, when a, when a son asked for a piece of bread, would he give him a snake? Or if he asked for an egg, would he give him a scorpion? And of course the answer is no, right? A, a good father knows how much he wants to delight his son or delight his daughter. A good mother knows the needs of their kids even before they ask, mommy, 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 right? In the same way, our heavenly father knows our needs and he delights in us coming to him as children. You know, sometimes as adults, we forget that God has asked us to have a childlike faith. And I think we get so hardened and we get so jaded and maybe cynical along the way that we forget that we have a father who is strong, an omnipotent, all-powerful father who can change any situation and can give us peace instead of anxiety. So we're going to remember our blessings. We're going to Release our burdens. And here's the third thing. This is a brand new one that I want to encourage you to do. This is a perfect time to do this. As again, we're, we're turning the corner from 2020 to 2021. As we're turning the page from 2020 to 2021, we're going to renew our faith. Renew our faith. We're going to do that privately, individually, but we're also going to do that as a family. And here's some great news, City Church. We're going to tangibly, practically help you with number three. We can't help you with number one and two. You've got to name your own blessings. You've got to release your own burdens. But we're going to do something together starting on January 3rd to the 23rd. We're starting a brand new series called 21. We're going to start with 21 days of prayer and fasting together. And I'm so excited about that. You know, it's interesting. A couple of weeks ago, I started to sketch out series for 2021, teaching series that we're going to cover. And I had something already covered for January. And then... Just a couple of days ago, I really felt, felt God stirring within me to, to scrap the idea for the first series and instead to prioritize prayer, prioritize hungering together for God. And so we're going to explain what all that looks like together, but just get ready for this by, uh, in, in a couple of moments, we're going to give you some, some questions, some prompting questions, some diagnostic questions to help you prepare for Sunday, January 3rd, as we launch 21 days of prayer and fasting to go deeper with God, to get new vision, new power for a new year. I'm so excited about that. So what am I asking you to do right now? As we look back on 2020 and look ahead to a brand new 2021, remember your blessings, release your burdens, and renew your faith. Renew your faith. Now, here's what I want you to do. 
get a piece of paper or get your journal out. Many of you have a journal uh, that you use to write things down. It's a great way to kind of physically writing things down. It's amazing how that gets into your mind and into your soul. It's a, it's a great exercise to get into. But if you're not a person that has an active journal, grab the notes app on your phone and, and use that as a way to kind of track this because these are really, really important questions. This will make this time extremely valuable. You're going to look back on this at the end of 2021 and are so glad that you spent just a couple of moments reflecting deeply about these important questions. And so after every one of these questions under those three categories we just mentioned, I want you to push pause. Just pause me. And I might look like this or, or I might look really weird. That's okay. Make me look as weird as you want. Just pause the screen at the end of each question to give yourself enough time to, to remember your blessings, to release your burdens, and then to renew your faith, okay? So just take as much time as you need, but this is on you to participate with me. And as you're doing this alone in your apartment or alone in your home, maybe your kids are doing something else, just remember this once again, that there are three to 500 people right now, on, online right now, and they're doing the exact same exercise. So you are not alone. Remember, Jesus is sitting right beside you, this open chair beside you. He was here with you. The person of the Holy Spirit is in your mind and in your heart, ready to engage and ready to help you with these questions. And alongside of that, your city church family, not an organization, not this group of people, these are your family. And we're going to share life together in a greater way than we ever have before. So we're together doing this, okay? So again, after every prompt, every question, push pause, give yourself enough time to write out the answers in your journal or on your app, and just to reflect, spending time uh, in the Holy Spirit asking Him these deep questions. And so before we go any further, let's pause for a moment and pray and invite the Holy Spirit to help us answer these really critical questions. God, thank you so much for how you are a God of transition, that we're never truly static with you. You're always sending us into your mission. And every time we go into a brand new year or into a brand new season or into a brand new piece of land or whatever the case might be, we know that there are obstacles. We know that there are giants in the land. We know there are things that we don't know it's going to come around the corner, just like COVID has been for 2020. And yet, Father, we're so comforted by the reality that Jesus said that he will be with us, that he will never leave us or forsake us. So right now, Holy Spirit, in each of our homes, as we're watching and listening to these next questions, we just invite you to speak to us. Guide our thoughts. Guide our pen. Guide our hearts towards what you would have for us as we think back to the last year, and more importantly, as we both look ahead together in 2021. So, we, so Holy Spirit, we are listening. Guide us right now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so you've got your piece of paper ready. you got your pen ready, your favorite pen, your favorite piece of paper, favorite journal ready. Maybe you've got a brand new journal for 2021. Here we go. First question. Remember, remember your blessings. This is the first question. Name your blessings. And here's some categories to consider. Name the people that you describe as blessings that God has surrounded you with. Name your material blessings. Name a warm place to stay. If you've got shelter, if you have a warm bed, if you've got a blanket, if you've got a pillow, name those things. If you've got some clothes, name those blessings. If you've got some food, name that food. Name as many specific material possessions and as many people as you can. Name your job. Yeah, even thank God for your boss. Thank God for your company. Write down the source of your income right now. Ultimately, God has given you that, of course, but thank God for your boss. Thank God for your company. Thank God for your job. Another category to consider under blessings, name a situation that you are grateful for. Maybe God has resolved something at the end of 2020. Maybe you've got an unexpected gift at the end of 2020 or sometime in 2020. Name a situation that God has helped you with. Here's another final category to consider under blessings. This is going to keep you busy for a while, isn't it? Name something that you're grateful for to the family of City Church. How has City Church encouraged you in 2020? Be specific in all these areas. Again, people, 
material possessions, your job, situations, our church. How has God given you all of those gifts? And just write as much as you can about all of your blessings. This will really, really help you when you go through uncertainty, fears, frustrations. Remembering our blessings is a huge antidote to facing a brand new year, okay? So push pause and answer those questions right now. Okay, I'm warning you, I'm coming back for number two. So I hope that you pause this. The second questions I want you to reflect upon. The first one, remember your blessings. Secondly, release your burdens. Remember, Matthew 7, 7 to 11. I want to encourage you to stop the video in just a moment to read that. Talk about how God is a father who loves us. He wants us to ask and seek and knock and the door will be open. So here's what I want you to do. Again, we wish we could start 2021 with a completely brand new slate. And in a lot of cases, we can. We can start new habits, right? We can start new diet plans, new exercise plans. We can start all these different rhythms. But some of our problems, unfortunately, some of our bills, some of our health situations are going to come with us into 2021. And so let's transfer our pressure from us. Just remember that exercise we talked about on Sunday. Physically, use these fists as a reminder. You're going to squish all of that pressure you're going to name in just a moment. All of your needs. Any health problems you're facing, any financial problems you're facing, any relationship conflict you're facing, any uncertainty right now, any economic uncertainty, um, things that you're worried about. Just write those things down. I don't think I have to give you too many categories, but whatever is on your heart, whatever keeping you up at night, Whatever's weighing you down, your shoulders down. Remember that Jesus in Matthew 11 says that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so transfer all of that pressure. Drop it at the foot of the cross. I'm going to give you a five-second countdown to push pause. Again, spend some time answering this question. Father, these are the needs that I want to transfer to you right now. Okay, stop the video. Okay, I'm warning you. I'm going to give you a five-second countdown. We're going to go to the last question, the last series of questions to help us renew our faith. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so now we spent time remembering our blessings. We remembered to transfer our pressure by releasing our burdens. And here's a really cool opportunity. We're going to renew our faith. God called the Israelites as they were about to seize that incredible piece of real estate, the promised land, by renewing their vows to God. God said, as long as you uh, fulfill the vows of the covenant, this is your land and you will be prosperous. You will be successful. He, he repeated the same thing to Joshua. And as Jesus sent out his followers, his 12 apostles, he reminded them that I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. So one of the most important exercises that we can do is to remember that we don't know exactly what 2021 is going to be about. We know that there's going to be some problems. We know there's going to be some uncertainty. But we also know there's some phenomenal opportunities, some phenomenal blessings for us to be excited about. And no matter what it is, whether it's the blessings, whether it's the pressure, whatever it's going to be, Jesus is going to go with us. So one of the best things that we can do is to renew our faith, to make a conscious decision right now. Decision. It's actually the word decision. Man, the longer you talk, the more mess ups you have. So forgive me for that, right? So we're going to make a conscious decision right now to renew our faith, to say, Jesus, we don't know what's happening in 2021. We certainly didn't know what 2020 was going to be about, but no matter what happens, you are my God and I am your son. You are my father and I am your daughter. You are my king and I am your servant. Bless me as I, as I fulfill the vows of this covenant. Bless me, Father, as I expand your kingdom in 2021. So here's some questions to think about. How is, uh, how is God calling you deeper in 2021? That's, that's what we're going to focus on from January 3rd to 23rd. We're going to spend time hungering for God, spending time listening to God, just crowding out some distractions so that we can hear the voice of God. So how is God calling you and me and us deeper in 2021? 
And here's some, here's three specific questions that I want you to answer before we push pause. Here, here they are. Okay. So number one, the first clarifying question is this, what do you need to stop in 2021? You have a lot of habits, you have a lot of rhythms, you have a lot of things that you go to for distractions, a lot of things that probably aren't always productive. And God, who is a good father, he knows that there are things that he wants to give you. He wants to give you more peace. He wants to give you more power. He wants to give you more wisdom. He wants to give you greater relationships. All those things are true. And yet there are some things that we're holding on to right now that are preventing us from experiencing those blessings. And so part of what we're going to do in January is just to get put some things aside so that we can hear from God in a deeper way. So as you think about 2021, what do you need to stop and not bring in to 2021? Maybe you've got some bad habits that started during the quarantine. All of us do, right? There's things that I don't want to keep doing. So just listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. What do you need to stop doing? Second question. What do you need to start doing? You saw that one coming, didn't you? You know, I think sometimes when it comes to New Year's resolutions, uh, it's funny, I've, I've learned this the hard way, that I get excited when I'm on vacation, I got all this time to rest and think, and I get really, really excited about all the things I want to start doing. And so I start adding this and this and this and this, and by the end, I've got a list of seven to ten things, and they're all very exciting. But then I crash and burn by about the 13th or 14th of January. You know why? Because I haven't stopped anything. I've just added those 7 to 10 things into an already busy life. And so in order to add positive, healthy habits, healthy rhythms for us to grow spiritually, for us to grow professionally, to grow our relationships, well, we've got to stop doing some things. So what do we have to stop doing? But the second question is this. What do I need to start doing? Again, to cultivate my relationship with God, to cultivate greater peace, cultivate greater power, greater strength, greater connection with people. The final question is this. As you're going through those mechanical questions, what do I need to stop? What do I need to start? Here's an overarching question, an exciting question. What is God's dream for you in 2021? Did you know that God has a dream for you? So, so many times we get focused on our to-do list and all the things going on with our shopping list and the things we have to do that we don't ever take time to get quiet with God and just to simply sit at the feet of Jesus and ask, Father, what is your dream for my life in 2021? How could my life look, my life look differently? How could my relationships be healthier? How could I have a greater year if I prioritize listening to you and following through with what you say? So listen to your father who loves you, who knows you better than you know yourself, and, and just ask him that question. Father, what are your dreams for my life in 2021? So I get ready to, to pause the video, the three questions once again. What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to start doing? And what is God's dream for 2021? And all of these questions are going to prepare us for the fast and the prayer focus that we're going to start together on Sunday, January 3rd. 10 o'clock, 11.30, 5 p.m. at live.citychurch.ca. So before I let you go for this last question, let me just pray for us. Let me pray God's blessing and favor upon you as we're together online, as we're preparing for looking back on 2020, but also looking ahead together in 2021. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for the gift of YouTube and Facebook and, and, our, and our City Church apps where we could watch this and be connected together. Thank you for the gift of technology, Father, that in this global pandemic that we've been able to stay together, that we've grown in our faith, that we've grown in our relationships with each other, even though we've had to be quarantined and social distance. Right now, Holy Spirit, we just invite you to do business with us. We ask that you, that you would just give us the answers that you want us to see. This isn't an exercise for us to get busy and to add things to our lives that are already busy. Simply, Father, we want to be at your feet. We want to be still, to hear the still, small voice of our good Father who wants to speak into our lives, to give us vision, to give us dreams, to give us power and wisdom for a year ahead. So Father, again, thank you for this time. Lead us into these questions so that we will be better prepared for this brand new year together. And all of us together, we said in the name of God the Father, 
and in God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All of us say, Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for spending time with us online. We'll see you Sunday, January 3rd, 10 o'clock, 11.30, and 5, where? Live.citychurch.ca. God bless you guys. Hey guys, before I let you go, can you help me with one more thing? We are so excited for 2021. We believe that 2021 is going to be our best year ever, especially as we spend the first 21 days together hungering for God, deepening our relationship with God, asking God for new vision and breakthroughs and power. It's going to be an awesome year that we're going to kick off on the 3rd of January. And in 2021, speaking of 2021, all of our missions funds that are invested up until tonight will go and go all the way to 2021. So all of our city, country, and world projects in the Light Project, we set a very, very audacious financial goal, even in a pandemic, to go higher than we ever have before. And our goal is $70,000. And at the time of this video, we still haven't met our deadline. So can you help us in two practical ways? Number one, would you pray? We know that God is a great father, that he, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So will you pray that all of those funds will come in so that we can invest them deeply in our city, deeply nationally, in, in new church planting, and also globally in India and in the Philippines. We're so excited about all these partnerships, and we just want to be as generous as we've ever had before. We want to shine light brighter than we ever have before. So the first thing, will you pray? Secondly, if you hadn't had an opportunity, you can give all the way up until midnight tonight to The Light Project. You can go to our website, citychurch.ca slash give. And I would just encourage you to give your best, your most generous gift that you can give so that, again, we can shine light brighter than we ever have before. Thank you again, guys. Enjoy your New Year's Eve. Enjoy New Year's Day. And we'll see you on Sunday.